All right, we've got the pedals mounted and uh, tighten them all down. Now we'll just go through the, some of the adjustments of the pedal. First thing is the pedal faceplate, and it has a three millimeter countersunk screw in there. And on the back, they have a eight millimeter nylon safety nut and a washer. And it's pretty basic stuff, of course, to change the position of this pedal. And we'll go ahead and do it real quick. Get our three millimeter wrench in there. Hold the nut in the back. Go ahead and let it get loose. And I'll loosen it until I feel it get really loose when the nylon of the safety nut disengages from the metal threads on the screw. Then you can take it off with your fingers from that point. And you have to be careful. You don't want to lose a little washer back here. And when it's mounted to your rig, you can't tilt the pedal back and dump it in your hand. So you just have to be careful what you're doing, which really isn't that difficult. And you can see there's the washer and the nut. Let me get a little focus. You can see the blue nylon part of that locking nut. And we just take the screw out, and the face place comes right off. And you can see the countersunk hole here. And so you never put the screw in any of the other holes, only in the countersunk hole, so it'll be flush. And you have three holes back here in the pedal itself. And of course, we can put this in any hole we want to. Now, very nice pedal feel, though, also. This stainless steel is really nice. And uh, so I'm just going to put it back in the middle. It comes, it came with the, in the lowest setting, but I'm going to put it back in the middle. And one thing I want to point out real quick to you is these have the little notches here, and the notches fit in the side holes of the pedal. So that kind of holds it from flopping around while you're tightening it down. And it'll also keep it from being able to rotate on you. So once you put your screw back in, go ahead and get our washer and nut back on. and tighten it up as far as I can with my finger, and then we'll put it back together with the three millimeter wrench and the eight millimeter wrench in the back. Not too difficult, and it's something like a pedal face change is not going to happen very often. I mean, once I get this thing where I want it, chances are I'm not gonna be messing with it anymore because there's no reason to. Now let's get to the tension adjustment on the pedal or how hard it is to push. Right now it's in the middle position and that's this position right here. And it's, it's okay to push it. It's, it's, it's got some good pressure on it, but not a whole lot of pressure. And it's just a matter of loosening these two screws here. And the thing about these counter loosening screws is one can loosen before the other and then the whole thing turns. So you gotta kinda tighten the one that came loose first to get the other one to come loose, which is I'm doing right now. And you can see it can be a little fiddly when you're in between the pedals doing this. So now I've got them both broken loose is where I wanted it. Also, the pedal spacers here are also clamping these two pieces of metal that form the lever on the bottom and the top. And you might have to loosen these on the bottom or the top to get this thing to move up or down. Fortunately, I don't have to do that on this one. Just to let you know, if you ever loosen this and it won't move, then you're going to have to loosen this or this or maybe even both of them. All right, so of course if we put it all the way at the top because of the lever principle, it becomes more hard, it becomes a lot more difficult to push the pedal than it was before. And conversely, if I put it down, it's gonna be a lot easier. I mean, that's just one finger. That's real easy to push there. But I'm gonna leave this in the middle, and of course you just fine tune this to personal preference. And another little feature of this, the counter screws like this, if you don't screw both of them at the same time, this thing can actually rotate on you. See that? When you try to tighten it up. See how it goes up and down? But if you just have both the wrenches in at the same time tighten it up, that won't happen. They kind of counteract each other. So you snug it up, no need to over torque it, and you're good to go for whatever pressure you decide to go with. Also while I'm back here, I want to show you the adjustment of the preload on the spring. And that's just the typical nut locking configuration you see on a lot of things. And these are 10 millimeter nuts, by the way. And all we do is break loose the locking nut, which is always the top one. Make sure it's good and loose, and you can spin that up. And then we can take our wrench and just adjust the preload wherever you want it to be. And just play with it till you get it where you like. And I'm gonna leave it where it is now because it feels pretty good to me. And just spin that back down. And we'll just lock them back up by holding the back nut and snugging up the other one. You don't have to really get them real tight to over torque it or anything. So that's the adjustment for the preload. Simple enough and there's a lot of pedals out there that have that kind of adjustment. 
The next adjustment is going to be for the pedal travel. Right now, you can see it's got a lot of travel. And I'm going to leave it that way for my travel. But just to show you the differences, we'll go ahead and get in here and loosen this. So we can actually move this up and I'll just hold it with my finger. You can see the difference. Wow, there's hardly any travel there. But again, I'm going to leave it in the back position where I get the most travel because that gives me, once I calibrate it, it should give me the most resolution and give me more precision as far as applying my throttle. But don't know for sure until I get it in the rig, but that's the theory and that's what I'm sticking with for now. <laughs> so we'll see how that works out. And you can finger tighten, tighten those uh, screws back up before you actually apply torque on them with the wrenches. Last but not least, you have the back lever adjustment or rather not lever, but the whole pedal assembly adjustment that allows the tilt of the pedal assembly. And I'll go ahead and get those loose. And you can see again, this can be a little fiddly. So once that's loose, then the pedal should have the freedom to move up and down. And again, when I showed you before, uh, we were talking about inverting the pedals because you can do that with this set. And that will give you the ability to also adjust it for the inversion to give you the right angle on the pedal when you're using it. But I'm not going to use it for that. Also, I could put it up even with the brake pedal if I wanted to and leave it there. But let's see, go a little further down and get it even like that. But when the brake pedal is passed, because of that little movement you get in the first part of the brake pedal travel, then you see the brake pedal actually goes behind the throttle. So I'm going to leave it where it was just a little bit behind the brake because then it makes it even. So we'll just leave it there. And again, we just tighten up our screws again. Making sure we do both of them at the same time. So it doesn't rise up on us. And there you go. All right, so that's all the throttle pedal adjustments. And I actually, I can see my, uh, one of my binding nuts back here is getting a little loose. I'll tighten that back up. Let's talk about the brake pedal. Probably the easiest pedal of all to adjust. And we'll just flip this around the other way. And I would adjust this from the front of the pedal if it was in my rig. And it's just a matter of putting your finger behind one of these washers here and squeezing that spring to take tension off the back plate, the locking plate back here. And then that just comes off and everything just comes off and you can rotate it up. Now, when you change the brake pedal force that you're going to use, this is more of a GT setup with all these bumpers in here. And this is how it comes from uh, Niels when he sends them out. At least that's how this set came. So you want to make sure you keep the same amount of space in here when you're replacing a bumper. I'm going to replace this one with spacers. There's two spacers already on here, so I'm going to pull all this apart here. And if you're careful, you can kind of just let this pedal, the washer will actually catch the edge of that metal there so it'll stay there and won't fall apart on you. This is what the bumper looks like. Let's see what's in here. First we get the bumper. Let me get a little focus. And what I'm going to do is replace that bumper with spacers. They come in the kit. And they've got a cool one here that's uh, kind of a big one. And what you want to do is make sure that you have, I'm going to use two of these spacers. Let me get them on here. These are like the individual spacers that come. They're all small, but you do get one big one like this. And I'm going to try to keep that stack about the same level picture of it here as the bumper itself and that's about pretty close that's maybe not even an eighth an inch less than the actual bumper and I think we could probably live with that so we'll see how it works so what I'll do is put this in the stack instead of the bumper and the bumpers are actually made by just while we're looking at it here uh, he gets them from a place called Fibrolast that's the name of these bumpers and there's an extra bumper in the pack too, the kit that you got, that we got, we saw the kit before. So then I'm going to put the spacers back on. And try to keep everything from flying off, easy enough. And once the spacers are back on here, I'm going to take the two washers that originally came off and put those back on. And then I'm going to put this backing plate, actually, I didn't put enough on there. Remember, there was two original spacers that came off of that with that urethane bumper, so I got to put those in the stack also. That gives me a total of four small ones on here and, one, and that one big piece. All right, so now I can put the two washers back on. And this back plate, 
you want to make sure that you get the fat end or the big end, what do you want to call it, facing towards the pedal. And the back, the little small end will be the rear of the pedal. So put that on here. <coughs> and just compress the spring again, and it'll all slide back in there. And it'll lock down into the grooves in that setting in there. And it sits in there really nice. I mean, these are really milled out. Like I said, it's really great uh, uh, milling and machining on this parts. Now, the spring can also get a little off center, so you want to make sure you center that back up and get everything kind of straight before you start using the pedal again. So now I've got more of an F1 pedal. A very, it's a lot harder to push this thing. So really, that's about the only adjustment on the brake pedal, of course, besides the, the face plate itself, the pad. And uh, that's probably the thing you're going to be adjusting the most. So it's really not that big of a deal to adjust the brake pedal. It's pretty quick, actually. I kind of like that. The pedal that's going to take the most time to adjust, and that's the next one, is going to be the actual clutch pedal right here. Now, in the video, he takes this whole assembly out, the spring and the, and the, the, the rod, and all this comes out as one piece, which taking all these screws out, um, just a couple extra screws really, but I found it's better to keep everything together to do it a little bit differently and what I do is, instead of taking this apart, I just leave this in here. I don't even mess with these nuts. What I'll do is, I'll actually get in here behind this where this plate is. Let's see if you can get a picture there. And put a little pressure in to take some, put some pressure on that spring to take pressure off this back plate where it's sandwiched between these two arms, the swing arms. You notice how loose this swing arm is? You don't want it tight so it won't move and, and it's binding up. That's not a good thing. So what I'll do is take some pressure off and I'll actually take this one of the plates here and push it, pull it this way. And you can actually pull it enough to get that plate tab out of there and swing the plate up out of the way, just like that. So now I've got everything loose and it's just easy to pull it out of the other leg, out of the other arm. So now the whole thing, the spring assembly, I'll go ahead and pull all that off. And you see it's just the rod now. But I got the spring assembly in here and you wanna make sure you see how this comes off so you don't mess it up trying to put it back on. If we can get some focus here. Okay, forgive me for the slow focusing camera. So the main thing is we got a couple of washers here on the top that goes towards the pedal. And we've got this little setup here which is a little nylon piece that goes into the actual spring itself. Let me get a better picture of that. And it has a black spacer around it also, so that's actually a separate piece. So you're gonna make sure you put that all exactly the way it came off, the two washers and this little setup here that goes inside the spring. And on the back, it has a similar thing to the brake pedal. It's got that bigger piece goes towards the pedal and the smaller piece hangs off the back. So let's go ahead and do the arm adjustment. And once this is loose, you got your arms loose here. Then we're going to change out where it's going to be. I'm going to move it up to the third hole. Now this takes a seven millimeter wrench and a two millimeter hex to get these off. Kind of again, when it's in your rig, it's not going to be the easiest thing to do. It's kind of fiddly, but you're probably not going to make a lot of changes to this either. And it's a small screw, so it doesn't take too many turns to get it off. So once it gets past that nylon safety nut part, I can go ahead and take it off with my fingers. And there's the nut. And then we'll make sure we get the washer off. Don't wanna lose that. And then the plate will come off. And all we gotta do is reposition the screw. Plate goes back on. Washer and nut. So I'm getting some of that black stuff on my fingers from the washers. And of course we just tighten it back up. And when you tighten this thing up, you don't want to torque it down so the plate that can't move. The idea here is to get this thing to where it's tight, but the plate still has, gravity will pull the plate down. I'm just going the wrong way there. So once I sense it getting tight, it's actually raising the plate a little bit when I tighten it. So this is, that's pretty good right there. Gravity's not quite pulling it down, but it's still got a lot of flex in it. I wouldn't worry about that. I think that's pretty good right there. All right, so let's go to the other side and we'll hit that one. Same deal.
I'm doing a little counter move here with the hex wrench to speed things up a little bit. And we'll take the washer and nut off. Plate comes off. Take out the screw. Put it back in the third spot. Plate back on. Washer and nut. And you can see it's not the fastest operation in the world. And I actually save time by not taking the middle part out. So that's one thing to consider that. All right, it's a little bit too tight, so we'll back that off a little. And just snug it back. This look can be a little tricky to get this where you want it to be. There we go. So still got plenty of movement here. Actually, that's a little bit too stiff. Again, let me just tweak that just a little more. Loosen her up a little. There we go. Okay, so now that we got that done, then we're ready to put everything back on the shaft that we took off originally. And remember, we got the two washers that go on first, these two guys. And they're going up against that, those two nuts that are in a locking configuration for the preload adjustment. And then we want to put this in so that the nipple part is facing back towards the spring, so the spring will sit, seat down on that properly. Put the spring on and put the back plate on. And then we're going to do the same thing we did but in reverse to get this back on. So we'll put one inside in first, put the tab into the metal plate, and then we'll go ahead and get the other metal plate and put some outward pressure on it so we can get that tab to slide by there and boom, it's in. So once that tab is in there and the spring is pushing back against it, it's not going anywhere. So now we've actually made the clutch a little easier to move by making that adjustment from the fourth hole up to the third hole. And you can see how it works. It's a very cool clutch actually. I really like the way this feels with my hand. Of course, once I get on the rig, I'll be able to tell for sure how much I like it. But it's got that, that little bit of pressure at first before you hit this, like you hit the pressure plate springs. And then you're pushing on those springs and finally it, it lifts the clutch plate off of the flywheel and you can, it gets kind of free and it's easy to hold it down. And then when you loosen it up or when you let your foot back off, the springs will kick it back just like that. So it's a little thing, it kind of, you can see how it swings up, that little swing arm. That's what I'm calling it anyway, a swing arm. <laughs> so anyway, that's the adjustments. Um, not that bad if you do that little trick there and, and you don't even have to take this middle part off, which might even mean you have to loosen these two. There is a travel adjustment here. I've already shown you that on the throttle, so there's no sense in showing you how that works again. Um, there are some per, uh, limitations for putting in the top two holes in this travel. You don't want to have it fully travel, but that's in the instructions. But you can play with that and see how it actually works in real time. Oh, and you do have a preload adjustment here for your springs. And we saw how that worked on the throttle. So there's no sense in doing that again either. So now what we're going to do is actually take the wires and wire up our controller board. And I've already got a piece of Velcro on the bottom of it. And a piece of Velcro over here you can see. That I'm just going to set this puppy right here and let the wires run to it. And then I'll bundle the wires up with some uh, zip ties or something to keep them from hanging all over the place once I have it done. So we'll go ahead and see how these wires go into this control panel next.